This slide shows the findings of our study. In, in what way do digital leaders create value? And what we learned over here, Andrew, was that it, digital leadership is not just about IT. It's not about software. In fact, when we asked our clients, is that what you mean by digital leadership? I said, no, no, we're absolutely certain it's not just about knowledge of software and IT. What stood out for us was the statement that digital leaders take traditional businesses and do it differently. Uh, it, th what this one brings to mind for me is, so when I was joining Tesla, I was doing my interview process and, and I was hired in by uh, just a phenomenal leader, this, this man named uh, Ben Putterman. So for those of you that, that might know Ben, uh, and uh, in the interview process, what Ben said to me is he said, at, at, at the company he had come from, a well-known company, mm -hmm. he had run learning and development uh, uh, in a couple of the, the businesses there. And he said, one of the things that I stood up at this company was the innovation lab. Mm -hmm. It was a lab for this company dedicated to driving innovative ideas. And he said, I will never work at a company again that needs a lab for Interesting. innovation. Interesting. Huh. The whole company needs to be the innovation lab. It, it, and it was such a paradigm shift for me from where I was coming from, where it was this, yes, of course. And when I got into the ethos of the Tesla as compared to the other places that I'd worked that were a bit more conventional, it was, oh no, everything here is, a, is about finding these fundamentally different ways to do things, challenging things all the way down to the base assumptions. Elon would talk about this as this first principles thinking. If you're, he's talked about this publicly, so you might've seen these videos, but this sense of if, if, you're, if the way you're finding a solution is going out there and finding the way we've done it in the past or the way others have done it in the past mm -hmm. and that's your starting place, you're never gonna truly innovate. You have to get down to the base first principles. It's a physics concept and then work up from there. Uh, and it, it, and I just watched that challenge hit every single function in Tesla in a way that I had never seen in another company, where it was, yeah. whether you're running finance, whether you're in this service center running this key kind of little process stuff, you're constantly challenging what's the better, what's the different, what's the fundamentally different way to do this. I mean, it's just in the DNA of the place. It's fascinating. What kind of, you know, so that's interesting, right? What do we do today? What do most large companies do? They see what the competitors do. And they're either copying the competitor or they're copying a competitor in a slightly different industry. And you're saying that's not what digital firms do. It, not, not primarily. I, I don't think that that's the starting place. Again, we'll benchmark and we'll look around and, and you'll see, I mean, the best digital leaders that I've worked with are incredibly um, curious and mm -hmm. paying attention and constantly looking for that, that. What are they doing? What are they trying to? But they're not taking it to copy it. They're taking it to get to the kernel of, why is that a good idea? Why is that practice there? And then extracting out of it some of the, again, first principles, mm -hmm. base principles, that then, ooh, then what's the innovation? What's the difference? Yeah. What this does lead to, and this is where my, my prior organizations would have been more uncomfortable with it, is you gotta be willing to test and learn. You gotta be willing to be wrong productively. How do you be wrong productively and it's this way of planning, it's this way of allocating resources, it's this way of unlocking autonomy throughout the organization in a way that's really uncomfortable uh, yeah. for, for those of us that grew up in a different time, maybe <laughs> to say it. And we'll talk about that because there are some fascinating things that you shared about Tesla that I don't think I've heard of any other company do it that way. So when we talk to the, about the structure, we'll get to that. The, Point that I also want to highlight here, and, and Andrew, you've actually called out this piece that digital leaders don't just do things better, faster, cheaper. They are disrupting their business, others' business model. They're creating value in ways that it takes away value from another traditional firm. You want to comment on that? It's, um, I, 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 it's the heart of it. If the heart of your business model is not some element of disruption, um, then it, it, it's, you're going to be running the operational excellence game. You're just going to be trying to chase that productivity curve. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's that 
uh, where you see a Twilio emerge in a marketplace, where you see a Salesforce emerge in a market, where you, it is not in these, oh, that's an incrementally better mousetrap. Mm -hmm. It is in a fundamental shift that is so much better, so much cheaper. So like it, it, it completely changes the way people work or do things. Uh, and to get to that solution, to get to that sort of innovation, uh, I think uh, Tesla, I think, is another good example of this. When, when Elon would talk about either the Model S as compared to its peers before, before or when you look at the Gigafactory mm -hmm. as a way of building cars as compared mm -hmm. to other manufacturing settings for building cars, it can't just be faster, better, cheaper. It has to be exponentially better. It has to be disruptively better. It has to not just play the game better. It has to change the game. Does that make sense? It has to change the game. That's the key word here. 